It's a bit rainy out, but I thought I'd start the vlog off sitting outside because honestly, do you really want to see me sitting in my office all the time? Plus, the kids are upstairs and they're jumping off the furniture, which makes it sound like in my office, which is directly below, like there's some sort of earthquake going on. I miss teaching in front of the class. I miss those face-to-face -face times where you can walk around and engage with the students and, and have that one-on-one -on -one conversation. I really enjoyed getting to know my students and really enjoyed all those face-to-face -face encounters, but we don't have access to that anymore right now. We have to pivot as well with our engagement. And if you're just pointing your camera at yourself and lecturing for three hours or six hours a day, you're gonna lose your students. There are three points of engagement that we really need to consider as we pivot our courses to online teaching. So that's what I really wanna kind of work through today. Now these are in no particular order, but the first one I'm gonna be discussing right now is student to student. Whether you realize it or not, your students have back channels going on in your class. Every class that I've taught, I know for a fact, has either had a Snapchat group or a WhatsApp group or both. So they are having these discussions. They're talking about the work. They're talking about the instructor. They're talking about the content and it's all happening on these social media channels. Now, the only problem I really have with this is that sometimes some people get excluded. So generally these things start with friends and then they kind of expand out as people get to know each other. However, some people in the groups might not end up with access to these social media back channels. So that's why I think it's important, especially in our online environment, as we've pivoted to online, we need to create these spaces for them as well. Yes, they can have their private back channel. I'm not saying put an end to that because you know what, you can't anyways, it's gonna happen. But what we can do is create a safe place and safe space for our students to have discussions and come together with each other. Now let's talk about the big three, Snapchat. I know a lot of you instructors out there are like, I don't know how Snapchat works. I don't understand it, I don't get it. And personally, I'm still kind of trying to wrap my head around it. WhatsApp groups. I know it's owned by Facebook and I totally, I 100% understand the discussion behind Facebook and privacy issues. I'm just saying that they are using it anyways, so it might be something worth considering. The third one that the, of the big three is Discord. Chances are you've got a lot of gamers in your class and the gamers love to use Discord, which is an online messaging app where they can share videos, audio, they can share files. So more often than not, a lot of these classes open up Discord channels. Now we also know that our LMSs, most of them, will have some sort of discussion forum. And I am 100% behind discussion forums if they're done well. Now discussion forums are tricky because it is hard to get your students to engage within them. It goes, it's a lot harder than just putting on some sort of prompt and telling your students that within 150 words they have to answer this and then they have to have two posts, responses to posts by the end of the week that have to be greater than 150 words. That doesn't really foster the type of engagement that you, you're wanting to have. What I would recommend is yes, you can have the prompts and if you're going to use prompts, Keep in mind, keep them open-ended questions. They've got to be answers that are going to, you know, allow for some sort of discussion. No yes or no, no close-ended, no give me this and that be done with it. Another thing is have fun with them. Get them posting and answering. Like when you're, when you're designing your prompts and thinking about your prompts, think about a fun way that you can get your students to respond to it. So something that I'm trying out now and it's kind of, the students have been actually quite enjoying is I get them to respond sometimes in GIFs or GIFs or however you want to pronounce it. GIFs or GIFs. I think it's GIFs because it's a graphical interface, but some people pronounce it GIFs, so I'm not here to judge or gudge. I, you can use memes, you can use GIFs, you can use GIFs, you can use movies. And then you yourself, get in there. Get in your discussion forums. When you set up those discussion boards and when you set up the social media that you might use or the back channels you might use, Get involved in there just to get the discussion going and keep it moving and get them trying to interact back and forth with each other because none of this is gonna happen on its own and none of this is just gonna happen based solely on them. Point number two. <laughs> Student to instructor engagement. And this is so very important, especially in the online world. It's so easy to run our online courses as a dump and run because we can use our LMS and just dump all our worksheets, dump all our handouts, dump all the readings onto there, and then disappear and ghost. 
You're not as visible as you used to be in a face-to-face -face situation. You know you're there, you know you're in the back end and trying to make things work and to add this stuff and to get things going. And you know, we've, we've got a few discussion boards going, but you're not as visible as you used to be. And students need that. They need to understand that there is somebody there. You need to have what's called a social and a teaching presence. What some people are doing, and I think this is absolutely brilliant, is they are starting course trailers. You know, just like a movie trailer that you watch for the first, it's like 30 seconds telling you what the movie's about. It's, it's a dinosaur. <laughs> Go ahead and build a course trailer. What's the course about? What can they expect from you? What can you they expect from the course itself? Just allow them to put a face to the course. Throw out a quick update video. Just, it doesn't have to be much. Again, it could just be you pulling out your camera, your phone, and just going to your native camera app and going ahead and putting it on the phone. Answer the questions that the students, you know, keep coming up, but just have a presence. Don't ghost them. Do not become the invisible man. And what I am. <laughs> you need to be there and have an active presence for your students. Offer weekly office hours. Most of you have access to some sort of video conferencing software. Use them for video office hours once a week. Say, okay, I'm gonna be here Wednesday from six o'clock till 7.30 to answer any questions you have about the course. Help me help you. Just engage with your students, have some sort of presence with them. It's easy enough to do in a face-to-face -face class. You have to be a lot more deliberate when you're doing it in, in an online environment. Student to instructor engagement is important. Another one is your student to content engagement. And this is something that I think gets missed a lot because when you think about it, your students do engage with the content. And oftentimes though, that engagement is through you, the instructor, right? It's you up on that whiteboard, writing things out. It's you handing out, it's you lecturing. So you, you kind of mix in the two, the student and instructor interaction and engagement, and then the content and student interaction and engagement. They're kind of the two in the same thing in a face-to-face -face environment, but they're not definitely in an online environment. Your students engage with the content differently because they don't have access to you teaching all the time. Don't do a dump and run. Do not just load up your LMS full of worksheets, full of videos, full of resources and say, okay, there you go, have at it. They need to be engaged with the content and they're going to get overwhelmed if you do that. So you have to be a lot more deliberate with your design. Most of you have learning teaching centers that can help you out with this. But some tools that are great to get your students engaging are things, tools like h5p.org. It's an amazing, amazing tool that gives you tons of different interactive elements that you can build and very easily, don't be intimidated, it's not coding or anything, but you can build these amazing interactive video, uh, course branching situations, hotspots, quizzes, there's so much you can build within it. Other ones that I'm sure some of you have used in your face-to-face, Kahoot. Kahoot is amazing. So again, you can get your students engaging with the content that way. Quizlet, that is another one that can get your students engaging. What I would highly, highly recommend is you start looking into these and start investigating different ways you can get your students to engage with the content. Video, they say, is king and it's true. But if you are gonna use video, make sure that that video stays less than about 10 minutes. And honestly, most of our concepts can be cut into 10 minute chunks. If they go longer than 10 minutes, sometimes they do, but if they go longer than 10 minutes, maybe look at a way to divide that somehow. And there usually always is a way. The students engage with the content differently in an online environment. So we need to design the content differently in an online environment. What are some of the ways that you've designed your courses for engagement? And by engagement, again, I mean the student to student, the student to instructor, and the student to content. I would love to hear your ideas. Please put them down in the comments down below. It helps out everybody to hear that. If you've done things and that work, please let us know. As students, if you're watching this, and I know some of you are, what are some of the things that you wish your instructors could do or that you had done in classes to keep you engaged in this online environment? I would love to hear your contacts and how we can all do this better.